All right, all right. Let's talk about what you need to know for the IMBDE exam. Hello, this is Dr. Sutton, and we're back for another episode of the IMBDE podcast where we share actual topics that have appeared on the exam. As always, remember, these brief podcasts are just to introduce you to what appears on the exam and not intended to replace any actual study program. Now, if you'd like a complete live online course, you can always join our MDI prep class. Visit us at www.mdiprep.online or you can call us at 1-888-827-9881. Well, guess what? Today, guess who's back? Dr. Marion is back and she is going to be sharing some valuable information about fluoride. Did you hear what I said? She's going to be sharing some valuable information about what? Fluoride. And the questions that you hear her talk about are most likely going to appear on your INBD exam. So, you know, I don't want you to hear my voice all day. So we're going to turn it over to Dr. Marion. Dr. Marion, welcome back. Thank you. I'm so happy to hear to be here again. Yes, yes, yes. And let me just tell everybody, just in case you don't know, Dr. Marion was a part of our MDI prep class where 90% of the students in our program, in her class, and the classes we've had since 2020 have all passed the exam. So the things that she tells you, please listen. All right. The floor is yours. Oh, thank you. So, yeah, what I'm going to talk about is fluoride. And um, I will start with something very interesting that um, I I recall from the course, um, Dr. Cook <laughs> told okay. us. Dr. Cook, yeah. yeah. She was a great instructor. Good. Um, the table, and she called it a table of threes and sixes. Okay. Which Because you always see three or six in the um, table. Okay. So that table, it tells you briefly um, at what age you need to give fluoride oh. and the amount of fluoride that you need to give. Okay. So for everyone, this table, you really need to memorize it. And um, I remember it was one of the first things I wrote down when I entered the exam. Okay, okay. Because it has valuable information. And um, when you go through the exam, you, you can really recall everything because your mind gets gets all over <laughs> right right yeah. right there's so much going on during yeah. the exam so yeah, when you, if you exactly. can have something like a table yeah. something easy to recall that helps yeah. a lot and also the way you write it down it's it's easy to remember it, so. gotcha gotcha yeah. and, and not and now so when you get there they give you a little something to write on yeah okay yeah, 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 they oh. do yeah yeah okay and actually the second day the it depends on which day, but uh, they give you a calculator as well. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, so you have a calculator, something right on. Yeah. So this thing that you're talking about is the remember is about the table of threes and sixes. Yeah. All right, tell us about that. So um, the age where you should start giving fluoride uh, supplements is from six months. Okay. And from birth to six months, you don't really give anything. Okay. Even if the flu- if the water is not fluorinated, no, you don't give anything. Okay. And uh, from six months to three years, if the amount of fluoride in the water is below 0.3, then you give 0.25 milligram. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, from three to six years, if the water from uh, is below 0.3, okay, the fluoride in the water is below uh, 0.3, then you give 0.5 milligram. Okay. If it is between 0.3 to 0.6, you give 0.25 milligram. Now, when you say open, what, what do you mean when you say open? O point. O point. Oh, yeah. okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Now you got to, You know, sometimes I, I you, you know, Doctor Sun could be a little slow. Yeah. So, so, so you're when you say zero point. Yes. Yeah, okay. Point. So when you yeah. said O point, I thought yeah. you're talking about like the letters. No. So okay. No, so you're talking like point. okay, good, good, because yeah. see sometimes and the good thing about us doing this podcast. It's because a lot of times the people that are listening to us may not have English as their first language. Yeah. And so I, I like to make sure we clarify. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so what we do is we say zero point yeah. something like 0.3 yeah. or something like that. But I mean, that's good. So yeah. it's O or, or zero. Yeah. Z, like you, so either O point or zero point. So we'll mm. just say zero point yeah. um, for those who are listening or knowing that O point means zero point. Okay. Okay. Good deal. Yeah. 
So, yeah, and from 6 to 16 years, you give, uh, if the fluoride in the water is less than 0.3, you give 1 milligram. Okay. And if it is between 0.3 to 0.6, you give 0.5. Ah, very nice. Okay. So yeah, it's very, uh, very important to know this um, um, table because uh-huh. um, you won't see a lot of questions on fluoride. Okay, but if if you know the table, then you guarantee the question that you're gonna get. See, that's good, and that's a good. That's a see. A lot of times, people don't know a question or two can mean the difference of you passing or failing. Yeah. So if you can get a question like this by just memorizing this table, that's a good thing. Yeah, exactly. Very nice. And okay. um, yeah, usually also you need to know the amount of fluoride in the community water. Okay. And this is a very straightforward question. It is 0.7 to 1.2 uh, ppm, which is part per million okay um i i do recall um seeing this question on my exam which was um what is the amount of fluoride concentration in community water so it was and a straightforward question yeah it is because the numbers is pretty easy easy to remember okay but the thing is and they did mention the numbers 0.7 uh-huh. 0.7 okay but they changed the units Wait a minute. The unit. So so they gave you the same number, yeah. but just changed the units. Yeah, exactly. So huh. I got confused, even though I know the number, but I was like, oh, maybe maybe that's not maybe that's not it. Oh. So they give me zero point seven ppm, zero point seven uh. liters, zero point seven milligram, zero point uh. seven kilogram, and I was like, well, I can exclude things, but I'm not really sure. Yes. That's that's an interesting way cuz I mean you think about it that could confuse you even though you know the number. Yeah. But but knowing that the ppm the parts per million yeah. is so that's definitely the right answer. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, okay, okay. And gotcha. uh, I was like I was thinking, man, that is very tricky. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good thing is you got it right. Yeah. You passed your exam, so that's all that matters. Yeah. Very nice. And um let me also tell you it's simple facts about fluoride okay. that um, maybe you guys need to write it down or just listen to it twice. Wait a minute. So this is something important, right? Yeah. Well, guess what? Anytime we have anything important, what do we do? All right. We got a drum roll. <laughs> All right. So these are facts that you got to know. All right. Go for it. So the greatest concentration of fluoride uh, usually is uh, at the outermost layer of enamel. Okay. And uh, the proximal and the smooth surface are the ones benefit the most from fluoride, okay. not the fissures. So it's the proximal and the smooth surface. Okay. And um, also the least so- soluble form of fluoride is fluoroapatite that can come as a very straight uh, forward question. Okay. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, the age where you should start giving fluoride is six months, not before. Mm, okay. Uh, which can come as the minimum fluoride age of um, what is the minimum fluoride uh, age that you can give. Okay. Um, one last question. Okay. All right. That um, I remember from my exam is um, they did ask... Um, the early childhood care is, is usually in what location? Which location in the mouth? So they're talking about childhood caries. Yeah. Okay. I, I did say this one because it's a, a little bit linked with uh, fluoride. Okay. Okay. And the options will be um, ma- maxillary incisors and molars mm. or mandibular incisors and molars or um, canines or mandibular canines. Ah, Okay. And um, it can be tricky, but if you know that um, the mandibular ones are not the ones that usually get affected because of the tongue action, okay, then yeah, you know that it's the maxillary incisors and molars. So, so the answer would be the maxillary incisors yeah. and molars. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not okay. Well, once again, I, let me just tell you, all the information that you're giving is so. Valuable. I mean, I've had a lot of people contact me to tell me how, you know, the podcast are really cool, how they really enjoy hearing the podcast. And so we just want, you know, people to listen and tune in because these are things that we know will help them in the future. Um, Of course, you can't just listen to a podcast and pass the exam, but the podcast plus the live online classes 
can almost guarantee you a pass. And that's what we want to do. Make sure you pass, get your dental license and move on. So once again, thank you for sharing with us. And I know we're going to hear from you again soon, right? Thank you. It's always great being here. All right. Well, thank you. And we'll see you next time. And just remember, just like we say, no matter what you're going through, no matter how tough it gets, remember that you have this. You got this. Until next time.